to start off proceedings for today, I would like to call on Mrs. Jennifer Cruikshank Howard, the Chief Fisheries Officer from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, uh, to perform the uh, welcome and commence the opening session of this workshop. Thank you, Mrs. Cruikshank Howard. Dr. Susan Renton, Deputy Executive Director, CRFM Secretariat. Mr. Michael Dalton, IECA Representative, St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Mr. Ian Golding and his team. Participants in the fisheries sector from across the region. Members of the media. Invited guests, good morning. I want to welcome you to the training course Fisheries Products Testing Laboratory, Laboratory Testing Manuals and Their Applications, sponsored by the fisheries component of the program on sanitary and phytosanitary measures, approved under the 10th European Development Fund Caribbean Regional Indicative Program. This program is being implemented by the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture in partnership with the CARICOM Community Secretariat and the Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism, CRFM. It is being organized by the fisheries component of the EU-sponsored Sanitary and Phytosanitary Measures Program of assistance of the CARIFORUM. The overall objective of the EU EPA SPS program is to create and enhance market opportunities through achieving compliance with EU's SPS measures and also through the development of regionally harmonized SPS measures for Cariforum states. In St. Vincent and the Grenadines, for the past 15 years, the Fisheries Division has been working assiduously to achieve the requirements to meet the sanitary and phytosanitary standards to regain authorization to export fish and fish products to the European Union markets. Hence, the majority of our efforts which are related to fish quality are centered on this objective. Quality assurance is hinged strongly on documentation of a company's operating and sanitary procedures and quality assurance plan. The latter in our case being on the principles of the HACCP system. For many years, fish processing establishments struggled with developing and implementing their HACCP plans. Although numerous training workshops were held to assist the establishment in developing these plans, the processes seems to have been overwhelmed by all the requirements and documentation this entails. Procedure writing is a tedious, time-consuming task which requires deliberate effort on the part of the management of the establishment. The fisheries division staff, fish processors, handlers, and fishermen have had the opportunity to attend several workshops or training programs and various aspects of the SPS measures organized by the Fisheries Division as part of the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines continued determination to meet the standards. The continued viability and further development of the fishing industry of the Caribbean region fisheries mechanism face several challenges, some of which are related to the inadequate development of sanitary and phytosanitary systems to suit the specific needs of fisheries and aquaculture operation. Towards addressing these challenges, a program on SPS measures was executed by the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation on Agriculture, IECA, with the fisheries subcomponent being coordinated by the CRFM. This is one of the components of the 10th European Development Fund program titled Support to the Forum on the Caribbean States in the Implementation of Commitments Undertaken 
by the European Partnership Agreement. Consultants were contracted to develop model legislation, protocols, standards, measure and guidelines for health and safety in fisheries with the fisheries component of the EU SCP SPS measures project and develop effective national and regional coordination mechanisms for the fisheries and aquaculture component. These were developed after document reviews and country visits to 10 of the 16 participating states that included stakeholders and national consultations. Additionally, regional workshops were organized to address a number of the deficiencies identified through the consultation process conducted. I would like to take this opportunity to encourage the participants of, participants of this training course to share your experiences and to be active participants. Welcome to St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and I hope you have an enjoyable and memorable stay. All the best and have a fruitful and productive training course. Thank you. I will also like to welcome our permanent secretary, Mr. Raymond Ryan, our former chief fisheries officer, and he is here with us this morning to give us some brief remarks also. So he will be giving some remarks too. Thank you. Good morning to you all. Raymond Ryan, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, Fisheries, and Rural Transformation. Dr. Susan Singh Renton, Deputy Executive Director, Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism Secretariat. Jennifer Crookshank, Chief Fisheries Officer, Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, Fisheries, and Rural Transformation. Ian Golden and his team, from Megapesca LDA. I'm afraid to try to pronounce some of the other names, so you would excuse me. That's fine. <laughs> My brothers and sisters from across the region, members of the media, other invited guests, welcome to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It is indeed my pleasure to address you all at this opening. More so as I have very few occasions in which I address stakeholders from the fishery sector. Being as it were eco-concentrate, mostly in St. Vincent and Grenadines, on matters related to crop production and livestock production. So I'm especially heartened to be here this morning. I would like to take the next few minutes to tell you a little about our own program that supports this activity and some of the work that we are doing across the region. The broad framework for our effort is the 10th European Development Fund program, titled Support to the Forum of Caribbean States in the Implementation of the Commitments Undertaken Under the Economic Partnership Agreement, Sanitary and Phytosanitary Measures. The program on sanitary and phytosanitary measures is one component of the 10th EDF program titled support to the Forum of Caribbean States in the implementation of commitments undertaken under the Economic Partnership Agreement. The SPS component seeks to assist CARIFORUM states to gain and improve market access by complying with Europe's sanitary and phytosanitary measures and to develop or strengthen regionally harmonized SPS measures. The specific objective of the SPS project is to increase production and trade in agriculture and fisheries which meet international standards while protecting plant, animal, human health and the environment. The program is being implemented by ECA in collaboration with the Caribbean Community Secretariat and the Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism as well as the SPS Committee of the Dominican Republic. CARI Forum states are the beneficiaries of the program activities. Quite naturally, at the national level, the ministries of agriculture and fisheries are important partners, ensuring that the actions of the program 
are well grounded in the countries and impact in a tangible way on the various stakeholders at the national level. The SPS program seeks to address the three major constraints impacting agricultural health and food safety systems in the region. And these are an outdated legislative framework for agricultural health and food safety in many of the countries covered by the program. Effective SPS measures are oftentimes undermined by the existence of fragmented legislation with multiple jurisdiction, jurisdiction and inadequate enforcement. The second major air issue to address is the fragmentation among agencies responsible for agricultural health and food safety matters. The jurisdiction for management of SPS issues tends to be scattered across various agencies in CARIFORUM states. Coordination of the SPS functions of the various competent authorities at the national and regional levels will serve to more efficiently and coherently coordinate agricultural health and food safety nationally and regionally. And the final area is the limited capacity of the public and private sectors to meet the requirements of the SPS regime. This, we believe, must be strengthened through courses such as this, which invest in the human talent of the region. Over the implementation period, which concludes in March 2017, technical actions under the SPS project have resulted in the following. The drafting and or revising of four model bills, which we hope will form the basis of a regionally harmonized legislative framework for plants and animal health, food safety, and fisheries. The strengthening of the regional agricultural health and food safety groups or institutions, including the Caribbean Plant Health Directors Forum, the Caribbean Animal Health Network, CARVET, and the regional agency, CAPSA, that is the Caribbean Agricultural Health and Food Safety Agency. These mechanisms seek to coordinate SPS matters in the region and advance the prioritized program of work for agricultural health and food safety. And the final area, in terms of increasing the capacity of the human talent, we seek to increase in the representation of the CARIFORUM, CARIFORUM countries. Sorry, I'll read that again. We also aim to increase, have an increase in the representation of CARIFORUM countries at, the international, at international forum addressing agricultural health and food safety issues, ensuring that the region has a voice in decision-making processes addressing SPS matters. And finally, we seek also to build the capacity of public and private sector stakeholders across the CARIFORUM region. And in this regard, we have had over 300 persons who have been trained in various courses related to agricultural health and food safety and fisheries issues. The fisheries subsector has great economic potential, which so far has remained underexploited. Significant improvement is needed in post-harvest handling, preparation, processing, quality control, and marketing of fish and fish product, and the development of institutional capacities, which are a necessary part of such improvements. This program addresses many of these issues within the broad framework of the three areas of actions outlined above. We are indeed pleased with the partnership that was forged with the CRFM and the output and results which we have been able to accomplish through this association over the, over the period. Likewise, the national level partnerships with the various ministries have been of great value in ensuring that we accomplish the objectives set out in the program. At the national level, we have what we, we refer to as a technical national implementation networking team, which is a partnership of public and private sector stakeholders in agriculture and fisheries who address issues related to the implementation. And here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we are quite happy to say that we have one of the broadest network of 14 individuals representing various groups across that development spectrum for agriculture and fisheries and we have had a very good working relationship in terms of how we address the matters related to implementation here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines and for this we are quite happy for the partnership that we have had with the Ministry of Agriculture especially and the CRFM 
also. So let me take this opportunity to assure all of you of our continued participation in SPS activities. Through this program and through other programs and projects executed by the Institute currently as we go forward. I wish you have a very successful, knowledge-filled workshop that prepares you to make even greater contribution to the national and regional development agenda. And I wish also that you enjoy your time here in St. Vincent and the Grenadines with us over the next few days. Thank you all very much. for being this late. Since I was not introduced, I, was, I would say that my name is Raymond Ryan. I'm the permanent secretary within the Ministry of Agriculture, Forestry, Fisheries, Rural Transformation. I would therefore like to take this opportunity to welcome everyone to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It is really a pleasure to see so many persons from the region here. And I understand that there are participants from the CARICOM region. Um, naturally, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada. I don't know um, most of the persons here, but um, I have been in, in the fisheries sector for many, many years, and I suppose those, these persons are, are the younger generation. And this is quite happening because we see that there is sustainability and continuity. So it's St. Lucia, St. Lucia, Barbados, Antigua, Barbuda, Suriname, Guyana, Bahamas, Trinidad and Tobago, Dominica, Belize, Dominican Republic. I hope I didn't miss anyone, did I? I would like to say a special, ah, Grenada, I said Grenada, yes. I would like to say a special welcome to everyone. It is really a pleasure. It has been a long time since I have not had this gathering, this type of gathering in fisheries. <coughs> Firstly, many countries in the region depend on the export of fishery products to provide foreign exchange revenues and employment in coastal in their coastal and rural communities. Even where there is substantial reliance on foreign industrial fishing as a source of export, an estimated 10% of exports are derived from small scale fisheries and foreign fishing may frequently provide benefits in terms of jobs for onshore processing and distribution of bycatch. Maintaining access to export markets for fishery products is therefore of strategic importance to many countries. The major export market for many Caribbean exporters of fishery products is the European Union. In 1991, the European Council introduced harmonized health controls for fishery products for human consumption, which included strengthened controls of products from third countries. These requirements are contained in the Council Directive 91493 ECC on health conditions for production and placing on the market of fishery products. It is from since then we have been grappling with the problem of meeting the necessary standards of S 
SPS within the region for fisheries. Not only must the industry in these third countries meet the hygiene and hazard analysis, as well as critical control points, hazard conditions, but in each country, the competent authority must establish health controls over the sector, which are at least equivalent to those defined in the EU legislation. And this has been an issue for many, many years. The potential loss of access to international markets for fishery products through a lack of capacity to respond to the requirements for strengthened health conditions is a problem faced by many less, less developed countries with only limited resources for implementing the legal, institutional, and technical steps for applying effective food safety controls to the fishery sector. A key requirement is for appropriate and timely information regarding the legal and technical requirements. I think for many years, many of the states really did not know what to implement or how to implement the necessary standards. And it is only now with the collaboration of various agencies such as AICA, uh, the CRFM, that we have been able to to move ahead or charge ahead. The continued viability and further development of the fishing industry, as you know, face several challenges, some of which are related to the inadequate development of sanitary systems to suit the specific needs of fisheries and agriculture operations. Towards addressing these challenges, a program on SPS measures, and I think this was mentioned before, by the Inter-American Institute for Cooperation in Agriculture, AICA, um, who indicated to you that there has been substantial collaboration with the ministry and AICA, as well as the CRFM in implementing such matters. Uh, this, I understand, and was said before, is the, one of the components of the 10th EDF program, entitled Support to the Forum on Caribbean States in the Implementation of Commitments Undertaken Under the Economic Partnership Agreement. I understand also that consultants were contracted. I don't know if it's the same consultants or, yes it is, to develop model legislation, protocol standards, measures and guidelines for health and safety in fisheries with the fisheries component of the EU ACP SPS measures project and develop effective national and regional coordination mechanisms for fisheries and aquaculture and for its incorporation into an overall SPS regime. I had here some details as to the objectives, but I'm sure you are you're very familiar with those. But what I would like to say Finally, I'm keeping it very brief, is that while much work has been done to implement various aspects of the SPS regime for trade in fish in St. Vincent and within the region, there is much more to be done. And we must try as far as possible to implement a regime, a flexible regime, which can respond to changing demands of consumers. And this is very important. Because these consumers will link the quality of fish and fish products purchased to issues relating to the environment, issues related to IEU fishing, issues related to, to um, 
good harvesting practices within the fishing industry. And therefore, there, it must be a comprehensive regime that, is, that must be implemented. This training is timely. And this, work, well, this workshop is timely and will provide skills to further enhance the capacity of our human resources in the region to continue the implementation of an effective management regime in the region. I would like to, if I may, declare the workshop and meeting open and to wish you a fruitful deliberation session, well, fruitful sessions of deliberation. Thank you very much. Okay, good morning everyone. Members of the head table, uh, consultants, members of the press, and participants from across the Cara Forum region. Uh, I have the honor this morning to welcome you on behalf of the Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism, uh, which is uh, CARICOM's regional fisheries body, partnering with uh, ICA, the CARICOM Secretariat, and also the National Committee for Sanitary and Phytosanitary Measures in the Dominican Republic to undertake uh, the SPS project. Most of you working in, in food safety may have heard of, of, of the CRFM from time to time, uh, especially if you work in the fisheries, if you're uh, located in the fisheries divisions and departments, you will know our name very well. But if you don't, just to give you a bit of background, the CRFM was established in 2002 and we have a membership of 17 states. CARICOM members and associate members of CARICOM are full members of the CRFM. And CRFM is involved, our work is really the responsible utilization of the region's fisheries and aquatic resources for the economic and social benefits of the populations of the region, both existing and to come. And we work in various ways, and principally through technical cooperation arrangements. We have also been uh, played a very crucial role in preparing the Caribbean Community Common Fisheries Policy that has provisions that deal with promoting trade and good marketing standards. So I guess that's, that's our uh, claim to being part of the SPS project. Previous speakers have given you a lot of background on the SPS project, uh, the EDF connection, the uh, financial technical cooperation by the European Union delivered through the uh, European uh, Development Fund which occurs in cycles, and you have uh, Caribbean regional indicative programs, which also occur in cycles. And with each cycle, we hope to build capacity and move forward and not stay in the same place. This is very important to remember and to work towards. And as previous speakers have said, uh, it is a very important partnership. We have some major regional organizations as well as the Dominican Republic involved. So we have all the elements to be successful in this endeavor. And as you know, the Economic Partnership Agreement, it governs how we cooperate on a wide range of trade issues with the European Union. And it deals with maybe duties charged on imports of goods, achievement of the market standards, trade in services, and so on. We can get benefits from the EPA, but there are also costs and obligations. And it is our building our capacity to fulfill those obligations 
uh, that we are trying to achieve through this project. I just want to spend some time uh, sharing with you information on what we have done, what the, the fisheries component has achieved so far under the SPS project. In 2015, uh, as, as uh, the ECA representative pointed out, there are three threads uh, to the project. Uh, one is dealing with improving legislation, the second with coordination mechanisms, and the third with capacity building. So under the legislation component, the CRFM was involved in 2015 in developing model legislation, in particular an export act, <laughs> model hygiene regulations for fisheries and aquaculture that dealt with certification, licensing and control. It also developed guidelines for developing and implementing HACCP plans for fish and fishery products and this was mentioned by the PS in his, uh, in his speech and a number of protocols. These are currently with CARICOM Secretariat and being reviewed in preparation for submission and adoption at the CARICOM level. That work also prepared what we call a green paper, proposals on a regional SPS framework taking into account the fisheries and aquaculture needs. That also is with CARICOM Secretariat. Also in 2015, we began work on the capacity building. And in particular, we had a team of consultants going around to the countries and looking at the situations of, uh, that they had in place for their monitoring and control programs. So we had a number of country assessment reports and this was consolidated to give a regional overview. So we have a regional assessment report and also a proposal on how we should be moving forward based on the gaps identified. These products are already in the public domain and available for use by the member states. What did we do this year? Because we are now in the final stages of this project. As uh, Mr. Dalton said, uh, the SPS project is coming to a close in March next year. So we have to be wrapping up and be thinking of the next steps. This year, we had, uh, at the legislation level, we are currently involved in moving to a more expanded legislation. So not looking just at export, but import uh, and intra-regional issues uh, to deal with trade. So we have some additional legislative instruments being developed. We also, a number of us from across the Cara Forum region, uh, had a 12-day course in Iceland, and this was on SPS management. And we looked at the entire chain of activities that are required, uh, how you would operate uh, at various levels in the industry chain to achieve uh, a good um, sanitary system for fisheries. We have also been uh, involved working with ECA, looking at coordination mechanisms, both at the regional level and at the national level. We have three persons in Iceland for a six-month training in quality management in fisheries. And these two courses that, you, uh, that will be delivered this week in St. Vincent and the Grenadines will be the final capacity building exercise in fisheries and aquaculture. You're going to be doing uh, laboratory testing methods this week and you'll be looking at inspection and control matters next week. And I will leave um, Mega Pesca, the team of Mega Pesca, to give you more details on that. But I take this opportunity to um, acknowledge the hard work of Mega Pesca so far we have eight draft manuals and they have worked very hard to prepare for this course. Um, so I, I wish them success in it and I hope that you give it your full effort so that we too can benefit from the hard work that they have done. Uh, if you permit me, I just want to spend a little time now telling you what we should be, uh, what to expect in the coming months. 
Now that we have a number of products, we have a number of model legislation products, just to uh, indicate that at the regional level, we expect this to go through CRFM, through to CARICOM, and through to COTED. And some of that process is already in train. Once it is COTED approved, but even in the absence or awaiting that COTED <coughs> approval, member states have been advised at this year's CWA that they should begin to align their instruments uh, with these model, uh, model legislation that is available. You will also have drafting guidelines that will help the national players to uh, use the legislation. In terms of coordination level, coordination mechanism, sorry, uh, we, we are working on developing MOUs. The CRFM is developing a MOU with the Regional uh, Agriculture, Health and Food Safety Agency uh, and also with CROSSQ, the Regional Agency on Standards. And also at the national level, ICA has had a very good model in the form of the TNINTs and I hope that countries will use this to, continue, to keep the momentum that the TNINTs have offered them so far. Some uh, countries have already established uh, a specific agency dealing with all the food safety matters, whereas others are forming in interministerial committees. You have to look at your own national situation to see what is suitable for you. In terms of capacity, this one is difficult because as you know, we build technical capacity and then if there is no, uh, we have limitation on resources, you don't get to use your training. So my advice to you is to try and identify a first priority and practical need that you can address. Try to see how you can use this training in the next few months. Make a plan. And whatever is the budget, if it's $10, if it's $100, we have to try and see what we can do with it. I know some very good old ladies who if you give them $10, it's amazing what they will do with it. So I, don't, I think that we need to try and be clever uh, and cut our cloth to suit, as they say. So even while you're being trained this week and the next, I would like you to think carefully about what aspects you could continue to build on when you leave here. And with these uh, remarks and suggestions, I wish you a successful training experience, and I look forward to seeing the benefits in the not too distant future. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Susan. Thank you, distinguished guests, for your uh, kind words of welcome and for opening this workshop for us. Um, I'd just like to uh, say a few words uh, as the contractor responsible for this uh, project uh, uh, about uh, the activities which we are, are conducting, not just this workshop but in a, in a slightly uh, wider sense. Uh, so the project title, <coughs> as you can see behind me, is Capacity Building of Regulatory and industry stakeholders in aquaculture and fisheries health and food safety to meet the SPS requirements of international trade. Uh, so we are primarily focusing uh, after discussions with ICA and with the Caribbean Regional Fisheries Mechanism, we're primarily focusing on the food safety aspects of sanitary and phytosanitary measures, uh, rather than on uh, issues such as uh, fish health and diseases and, and so on. Um, the objective, the aim of the project is in line with the overall aim of the 10th uh, EDF uh, SPS project. That is to improve the capacity of public and private sector stakeholders in areas such as the application of good agricultural and manufacturing and laboratory pr practices, HACCP and risk analyses, pest identification and, and food safety and so on. Um, and the capacity building activities will allow the 
participants from the CARIFORUM countries to uh, gain greater benefits, we hope, from the uh, economic partnership agreement with the EU, but also uh, to better integrate their fishery sector uh, uh, with international and regional trade. So, in terms of the particular activities of this project, uh, there have been a, a number of activities. We have prepared, as Dr. Susan has indicated, eight uh, operational manuals dealing with different aspects of the food safety of uh, fishery products, uh, dealing with field conditions, uh, operational aspects uh, for controlling hygiene in the supply chain from fishing vessels and aquaculture uh, facilities all the way through to processing and marketing and covering issues such as traceability. And the first six manuals we have prepared to deal with those kind of, uh, shall we say, control in the supply chain issues. And they are primarily aimed at users in the fishery sector as well as uh, inspectors from competent authorities. And those six manuals are, uh, are going to be the subject of the training course next week when we will have uh, members and representatives from uh, your country's competent authorities, inspection bodies, uh, attending in that workshop. Uh, the last two manuals are concerning laboratory issues and they will be the subject of our uh, training this week. And they are a manual on the laboratory testing of fisheries products and a manual on laboratory quality assurance. And uh, the presentations and the content of the work this week will be built around the content of those manuals. Uh, as Dr. Susan has said, we are well under, uh, underway in terms of producing those manuals. They're approaching the stages of finalization. Um, six of the manuals, the manuals concerning the uh, inspection system and the controls in the supply chain, will be translated into three languages, Spanish, French, and Dutch and that is also uh, partially underway at the moment. Uh, and the final versions of all of these manuals will be distributed in both print versions uh, and in PDF files online via the, uh, via the website. Uh, so that is the production of the manuals. Of course, we've developed the training program and we'll be delivering uh, the training courses uh, during these these two sessions um, and all of the course materials that uh, we will be presenting to you will again be available uh, online. Uh, we are videoing uh, the course content as well uh, so that material will also be uh, available to you as a reference and also to your colleagues because you, you can appreciate that it isn't possible to bring every possible person from every laboratory uh, to an event like this, but uh, we hope that uh, by making these materials more widely available through the internet, uh, you will be able to guide uh, your colleagues uh, to receive the benefits of this, uh, in this intervention activity. Uh, other things that have been uh, undertaken during the project, uh, we have specified and uh, purchased and procured uh, some of the equipment which you will be using during the course of this week and your colleagues uh, next week, things like histamine uh, test kits and test kits for other par parameters, uh, for example, uh, rapid testing of uh, microbiological parameters and for colleagues next week uh, things like water quality test kits and thermometers uh, are all being supplied under the project. Uh, we're also in the process of designing and implementing impact assessment tools because it's all very well to undertake a project such as the 10th EDF SPS project but 
uh, we have to look forward to the impacts and to understand what went well and what didn't work so well and what were the long-term outcomes of the intervention so that we can make better decisions about interventions in the future. Uh, so you have all been kind enough to complete questionnaires which we will develop into monitoring indicators and these will help us to uh, determine the impact of the activities undertaken during this training and also to, to an extent wider uh, impacts of activities uh, elsewhere under the 10th EDF SPS project. And finally, we've been working on developing relevant communication and visibility tools. So we have in process an infographic, which is a Google map showing locations and numbers of key parts of sanitary and phytosanitary infrastructure in the Caribbean region, uh, providing information and contact details on competent authorities, on laboratories and the facilities which they have available, linking to inspections by the European Commission when they have been to visit uh, different countries to assess their compliance with EU regulations, and linking this also to volumes of trade in fishery products. And all this is mapped within an infographic uh, which will be on the CRFM website. And then also we're preparing press releases and newsletters. So overall this is a project I think which seeks to uh, put a, a final uh, cap on the capacity building activities of this component of the uh, SPS, 10th SPS project concerning the fishery sector and it is perhaps as we've uh, heard relevant to note that as this project is, is coming to an end next year that this will not be the end of EU interventions in this sector. We know that under the 11th EDF which runs from 2014 to 2020 there is an allocation made also for sanitary and phytosanitary issues and I know that it is the intention of the European Commission to look for ways to continue supporting effectively uh, the, the further development of uh, control systems, sampling and testing systems, particularly for fishery products being one of the uh, high importance products for international trade within this region. So as we go through this week, uh, we look forward to also having discussions with you about uh, the way forward essentially, how to do our jobs better, uh, how to be more efficient and more effective in the implementation of these important systems. Uh, we look very much forward to, to working with you and I would also, uh, on behalf of Mega Peshka, like to extend this welcome to you all. Thank you very much. Uh, so what I would like to do now, if I may, is uh, get uh, some members of our team to uh, introduce themselves. And first of all, I'd like to call on Dr. Christine Freuser, who will be the principal resource person uh, for the training workshop this week. So, Christine. Okay. Good morning to you all. My name is Christine Freuser. I'm a food safety expert, so I'm working with Mega Peshka on this project. I have developed the two manuals we are going to talk about um, the whole week. I also developed the, the training program. We are um, going uh, to have also some practical um, um, test experience. And from my background, I'm a food scientist, I'm a nutritionist, I hold a PhD in um, biotechnology, and I have been working for several years with the German industry, so I, I was in, in charge as a quality manager to implement ISO 9001. 
I was also in charge um, to develop and maintain, implement the HACCP system and also for the test, um, building the test capacities within those systems. Then I'm also, um, after that, um, worked internationally as, as a food safety consultant and I'm working for several donors for UN, EU, also for the German government a lot, so I'm involved in many projects uh, developing test capacities, especially um, SPS relevant test capacities and um, I'm working more or less uh, practical also with the laboratories really implementing aspects and Further, I'm also working for the Commission as an evaluator in research um, activities so that everything uh, comes together in, in the aspect of food safety. And I hope we will have a food for a um, week and um, I hand over to... Uh, yes, maybe we can call on Inigo to come and uh, say a few words, please. Hello. Hi. Good morning. Well, uh, I'm going to introduce to introduce my, myself and my company briefly, briefly as uh, Christine and and Ian said, well, uh, well, my name is Inigo Hernandez. Uh, well, first of all, I would like to express my gratitude to, to well, for being invited to this event here in San Vincent. And well, uh, talking about my background, well, I've experienced as an engineer, industrial engineer for many years, working for, well, several inter multinational companies uh, in order to help them to to develop or to well yes to develop their products all around the world and uh, well in this sense uh, I'm here uh, trying to approach to uh, approach to to you the violence technology to detect the, the histamine content in in fish in this sense well uh, I trust that the violence technology can help to well, to increase or to get a high level of control in the determination of histamine. And well, that's why I'm here. And well, mm -hmm. I would like to, to be here more time, but unluckily, the next Saturday I have to be in Indonesia because we are some affair with the government of Indonesia. And well, I had to, to leave them Wednesday morning, but uh, well, I'm, I will be try to, to do our best to, to show you how our technology can help you. And first of all, as I said, thank you very much for your for your invitation. It's I'm really proud to be here. Thank you. Thank you. So Inigo is is essentially our, our histamine testing expert. So uh, and he will be working with you tomorrow morning on the practical. Uh, demonstration of the BioLand rapid histamine testing uh, method. As he says, he is going to be having to leave us on Wednesday morning, uh, so please do make sure that you uh, get the maximum benefit from his presence while, whilst he's here. Uh, so I should introduce myself as well in a little bit more detail. Um, my name is Ian Goulding, as I said, I'm a specialist in fish quality processing um, and international aspects, particularly uh, trade regulations and food safety regulations in, uh, in fisheries trade and, and management. Uh, I started my career in 1978 as an environmental health officer in the UK, so I've come to this whole area as, uh, as a food inspector, essentially. Uh, but after a while I went back to university and I got a master's degree in food science and a PhD in fish technology and, and marketing, particularly focusing on aquaculture uh, products. And after a period in industry and also a period lecturing, 
Uh, I started working internationally in 1986, so this year I've just celebrated 30 years on the, on the international circuit. Um, and my core expertise is in fish inspection and quality control, and particularly uh, dealing with the EU regulations, which uh, many of my colleagues have, have mentioned, uh, and helping uh, many countries around the world to uh, respond to the demands of the European Union and other uh, export markets uh, for improved safety and quality of of fishery products. Um, so I was working uh, for various agencies for a number of years, but in 1994 uh, I set up a company called Mega Pesca in Portugal. Uh, some of you may have heard of it. Um, that company has been uh, essentially working in this area for many clients around the world. Uh, both directly with governments, but also with agencies such as the EU, FAO, UNIDO, World Bank, and so on, uh, in, this, in this area. Uh, I am a fellow of the Institute of Food Science and Technology in the UK. Uh, I am a founder member of the International Association of Fish Inspectors, which was uh, something we set up with colleagues uh, from different countries in the late 1990s. And actually, I, I operate uh, as a secretariat for uh, something called the Peter Howgate Award, which is a, an award for young fish technologists. So if any of you are under 30 or have colleagues under 30 years old, uh, during the course of this week, I'm going to be talking to you about uh, seeing if we can get some more applicants for this award because we will be financing attendance of a young fish technologist to a uh, major uh, fish hygiene and quality conference in Iceland uh, next year. So that's something we can be talking about. Um, I'm also editor of uh, Fish Files Light, which is a fairly popular monthly newsletter on EU fisheries news. Uh, some of you may be uh, recipients of it. Uh, last year I was the uh, uh, visiting lecturer at the uh, UN University Fisheries Training Program in Iceland uh, where I had the, the, the pleasure of, of meeting uh, Silena uh, uh, while she was there on, on that course. So. Uh, not, non, uh, there are one or two of you who we have some uh, previous contacts with. Um, and one interesting project which I think we can talk about during the course of this week, which I was involved with quite recently last year, was working in the Pacific region with small island countries, uh, looking at ways to uh, rationalize the implementation of official controls and testing on a regional basis. And we think this is probably one of the major challenges which uh, the, is, is facing the Caribbean. So uh, this is one of the uh, issues which I think over the course of these, both courses, both this week and next week, we, we can talk uh, uh, in a little bit more detail. So thank you very much and have a great week.